So I'll be revisiting some of the things and going backwards and forwards a, a little bit just to make the picture clear to us, insha'Allah. So this day, as Allah has told us in the Quran, is a day which is as long as an estimation of 50,000 years of what we count here on earth. في يوم الله سبحانه وتعالى says في يوم كان مقداره أعوذ بالله من الشر الرجيم في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة a day which is estimated in our days as fifty thousand years for all the judgments are going to be held all the judgments have to be completed there will be quarrels and arguments denials protests this person took from me, I need my right. Blames. All of these have to be settled. In one ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when the criminals, when we say criminals by the way, let me reiterate, criminals are not people who do illegal things of what man has made law, but they are the illegal things which Allah has made law. On that day are the criminals. When they enter hellfire, يُقْسِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ the, 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 the criminals will swear. In another verse, the best calculator among them will say, we, were, we, we, we lived on earth only but a day. So, the hereafter, the day of judgment compared to the length of the time that we stay on earth is so overwhelming. That this whole, these years that a person lives here, no matter how long they've lived, will seem maybe like the feeling of a day or part of a day, as compared to what of the events and the time that will be on that day. Going back to the end of the hadith about the Prophet's intercession, which I mentioned two weeks ago, the long hadith where the people will go from Prophet to Prophet asking if Allah will begin the judgment, ask them to intercede. And each one of them will say, myself, myself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, finally, he says, Ana laha. I am the one qualified for it. He says, he prostrates to Allah, and then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his angels, descend. His angels descend, Allah descends. The manner in which Allah descends is unknown to us. Laysa kamithlihi shay. There's nothing like unto him and he sees all things and hears all things. al-basir. The manner in which the angels will descend is not like the manner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we also don't understand the manner of their descension. And the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come down. Eight angels will be carrying it in accordance with the ayah in Surah Al-Haqqah. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ ثَمَانِيَ On that day, eight angels will be carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Sahih Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ states in relation to the size of these angels that one of them from the earlobe to the shoulder is like the distance of 700 years for a person riding on a horse very fast. He says, Allah will say, Ya Muhammad ﷺ, إِرْفَعْ رَأْسَكْ وَاشْفَعْ تُشَفَّعْ وَاسْأَلْ تُعْطَى Lift your head. And seek intercession, I will give you, and ask for anything, I will give you. And the Prophet ﷺ says, and this is the part which I want to continue today. He says, I lift my head and I will say, O oh Lord, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. Then it will be said to me, Ya Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, ﷺ, you may allow to enter paradise those who have no accountability upon them from your Ummah, to enter from the right door of Jannah, specifically or especially. But they can choose to share to enter from any other door which other believers if the, will enter through if they wish. By the one who possesses my soul in his hands, the width of each door is like the distance between Mecca and Hajar. Hundreds of kilometers distance. The doors of paradise. So from the blessing and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these doors are so wide that they welcome a large number Beyond our calculation. This hadith is narrated in Bukhari, Muslim and Tirmidhi. So the first among the people who will move along are the ones who, are, who believed, who are the believers from the ummah, from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
not from the people of the prophets before, but from the nation of Muhammad sallallahu We ask Allah to make us one of them. They will, end, they will pass and skip the day of judgment. They have no judgment upon them. There are few hadiths talking about these types of people who will not be judged at all. And the Prophet sallallahu tells us, which is in Bukhari and in Muslim, probably a few words difference. He said that 70,000 of my ummah will enter paradise without any judgment and without any punishment. Sab'un alf. Yadkhuluna al-jannah bila hisab wal adab. No judgment, no accountability, and no punishment. No accountability because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all of his rights, all of his rights. And these people have not taken the rights of anyone. Allah forgives his rights. The rights of people he doesn't forgive. On that day it has to be dealt with in a different way. But these people, they have no rights owing to people. So Allah has forgiven him his rights. They have done no wrong to other people. And there is no major sin to be punished on. A Rasul was asked, O oh, oh, Messenger of God, can you describe these people with, to us? We want to be one of them. And he said, in one hadith it says, They are the ones who do not seek uh, a healing which is known in those days al kay where you iron your skin in a certain way a healing which is not a form of healing and do not believe in superstitious beliefs and they truly rely and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the full meaning of that word now this requires a whole lecture to explain what it actually means true reliance the whole idea of this is that these people they have done all the conditions of the of the islam they have not harmed anybody and they are obviously enormous rewards these people but on top of that on top of everything that everyone else does all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ have done of jihad and fasting and prayers and everything on top of all of that these people have got this extra quality which has reached a level of which has reached a level of almost perfection, which is the complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every way. We can revisit this hadith one day. But a companion stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, can you ask Allah to make me one of them? He said, you are one of them. Then a man stood up and said, can I be one of them, a messenger of Allah? And he said, sabaqaka ilayha ukasha. The other companion's name is ukasha. He said, ukasha has beaten you to it. Meaning, a Rasul used to speak in a in a pleasant manner to the people. He beat you to it. Doesn't mean that if you had asked before him, you were going to get it. It just means that it wasn't meant to be for you. It's not meant to be for you. And it was the will of Allah that he's going to get up and ask that question. And I'm answering this, that it wasn't meant to be for you. You, are, you will not be among them. But since you asked, I'll answer it this way. He beat you to it. So in a pleasant way, without harming his feelings, our Rasul Wasallam used to respond in such a manner. In another hadith, 70,000 seemed a small amount to some companions. So the Prophet ﷺ added, وَثَلَاثُ حَثَيَاتٍ مِّنْ حَثَيَاتِ رَبِّي And three scoops of my Lord's scoops. How are these scoops? What is the manner of this scoop? Allahu A'lam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only knows. But these hadiths indicate that there could be a little bit more than 70,000. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, these people who pass without judgment and without any punishment, they will pass all, this, all these trials, but they will not enter paradise straight away. They will pass the trials of the judgment day, the trials of the mizan, the scale, which we're going to talk about today, inshallah, the trial of passing across hellfire, the sirat, the thin bridge bestowed above it. But they will wait in a place outside the doors of Jannah. This is because of the many hadiths speaking about Sahih hadith that the Prophet وسلم, Muhammad وسلم, will be the first to be allowed to enter Jannah. And we're going to revisit these hadiths later on when we get to the topic about entering Jannah. Who will enter first and second and the types of people who will follow after that. But whoever passes through right then before the Prophet وسلم, has come then these people are awaiting 
Other people who will be awaiting, since we're on this topic, will be a people whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal. And we're going to talk about that when we're speaking about the scale today, tonight, inshallah. And other types of people that will be awaiting are people who had enough rewards, however, and they've passed, however, there are people they owe something to, but they are both believers. And these people are called Al-A'raf, combination of those whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal, and another group who are owing others something. They will be stationed, they will be stopped, on the Sirat, on the bridge bestowed, or a little bit past it, but somewhere around that area, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is interceding. And these are the first to go. Among them who will be first to go as well without any punishment or judgment are people who died and Allah had forgiven all their sins. These are people who are martyrs who died in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the cause of truth believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the cause of good believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed in the Quran. And these people, if they have no rights, people have rights upon them, they will also be among those who will pass without punishment or judgment. Who will be the happiest due to the Prophet's intercession? Said so the Prophet has been interceding. Let's see who the happiest person of this intercession will be. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, this hadith is in Bukhari. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu states, I asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day, who will be the most joyful on that day when you intercede for us, O Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you intercede? And he replied, I thought no one will ever, this question will never occur to anyone to ask, but the one who I assumed will ask one day, if any, it would have been you, Abu, Abu Huraira. And here you have asked it. He said, Whosoever says, La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship besides Allah, sincerely from their hearts, in his own conviction and self, will be, the most, will be among the most joyful of my intercession on that day. Meaning, that intercession meaning their books will be received in their right. They'll be forgiven. They'll pass quick. They, so they're the most joyful in passing. There are not many obstacles in the ways of, this, of these people. And then the Prophet ﷺ was asked, What do you mean, whoever says the word La ilaha illallah with absolute conviction and sincerity in the self? He said, The ones who when they say it in their life, till death of course, that their belief in that word, when they say it, it prevents him from the forbidden things Allah has made. I don't mean that when you say La ilaha illallah at that moment it prevents you. It means that this person, the word La ilaha illallah, which they constantly say, they understand its meaning. And they say it clearly, sincerely from their heart, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So it involves taqwa, Protection from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust and honor and respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word. And as a result, they acted upon that word, upon its meaning. If one says that Allah is worthy of worship, khalas, that's it. The whole life becomes a way that he tries or she tries to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. Even though Allah knows we sin sometimes. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, He is the one who says, La ilaha illallah. And it is the major cause of preventing him or her from the forbidden things. Because they say, La ilaha illallah, it causes them to stop, stay away from forbidden things, from the haram. These types of people, Allah know who, knows who they are, and they will be the most joyous of the Prophet's intercession. 